Welcome back. If you've just joined us, we've been looking at Nigeria's foreign policy drive under the stewardship of Nigeria's foreign minister, Mr. Jeffrey Onyama Dungewe. Let's now look at the efforts to repatriate stolen funds. Uh, it's on record that um, in Nigeria's effort to secure the release of $400 million that of Abacha loot, that we need to settle the Swiss government to a tune of $79 million. Is this true? One of the big challenges that we face in, um, in recovering stolen loot uh, is the cost, is the high cost of that, you know, legal fees that have to be paid and, uh, and other administrative fees that, we have, to pay, that have to be paid. And, um, and, and that's one of the things that these res the resolution is trying to um, really address, to get countries, you know, not to make it, not to put so many obstacles, and especially financial obstacles, uh, in our way in trying to recover our funds. But with specific reference to the Swiss, uh, no, there is no, uh, we're not paying the Swiss government any, uh, anything at all. But what we are paying are the lawyers you know, that are representing us, that we're using, you know, to facilitate all this. And, uh, and granted, I think that we're probably paying uh, a lot, uh, too much. With you attesting that there are severe conditions for the release of the stolen funds, isn't this a diplomatic way of frustrating the moves? No, it's not, I mean, not, not really, you know, because you see, look, um, you know, these are countries that have laws and they have procedures and you just have to go through them. You know, um, they have to make sure that um, the funds do not belong to, uh, to people. They have to make sure that um, if some people are claiming them, that it's sorted out. Somebody has to sort them out and they're invariably the courts and it takes time in the courts. Could you shed more light on the formulation of the national diaspora policy? Um, well, I mean, it's, uh, it's a policy to try to, I think, um, continue to drive the engagement of the diaspora uh, in, um, you know, in Nigeria and, uh, and Nigerian development, you know, that they should uh, to almost institutionalize uh, their role in uh, the development of our country. And, um, and it makes sense. Let's come to the challenge of deepening democratic institutions, especially in West Africa. Recently, we've recorded two different elections uh, with two different uh, fortunes outcome now. Um, with the regards to the Gambia's issue, uh, does that development, does it take us back to the era of sit tight African leaders? That's, the, I mean, that's a very important uh, point. Uh, it's a challenge for West Africa, um, but we have seen that um, West Africa has come together as one, united, and um, taken a position very quickly on this. We saw um, a delegation that was sent, uh, Mr. President, the President of uh, Liberia, the President of Ghana, and the President of Sierra Leone uh, to meet with uh, President Jame of the Gambia. Uh, immediately that happened. And they followed that up with a summit of ECOWAS that held here in Abuja, uh, in which uh, a, a resolution was, uh, was adopted, was taken by, um, by all the West African countries, that it was un unacceptable. They are not going to have uh, um, this uh, uh, a compromise of a democratic process. And, um, and, and, and they are ready to intervene to prevent that happening. And, uh, and of course, Mr. President was made uh, the mediator and the, uh, his co-mediator uh, is the president of, uh, of Ghana. So what this tells us is that West Africa is standing as one for democracy. And, um, and it's not individual countries doing that, but as a, as a grouping. Do you think the ECOWAS institution has enough political will to prefer solution to the Gambian crisis? Yes, absolutely. No, I mean, ECOWAS has been clear. I mean, they were, they were as clear and unequivocal as they could possibly be. The presidents of the ECOWAS countries, they said, come January 19th, he should step down. And if he does not, ECOWAS is going to take measures to assert democracy in the Gambia. Would that also include military options if all diplomatic initiative fails? Nothing is ruled out. 
nothing is ruled out, uh, and they are ready to uh, ensure that uh, uh, democracy is upheld in the Gambia. With, and they made it clear, nothing will be ruled out. When we consider some political antecedents like in Kenya, Zimbabwe, what is the possibility of having a unity government in Gambia? No, would be the answer. Uh, certainly from what the presidents were saying, it's not a question of negotiating. It's a question of implementing and, if necessary, imposing the will of the people. What's Nigeria's interest in Gambia? It's Nigeria's interest in democracy and the ECOWAS community. I think it's, it, it's bigger than the Gambia, you know, and I think this is what is um, so important and, uh, and so good about this that um, we have African countries and African leaders looking at the bigger picture of the sub-region and looking at the bigger principle of the importance and protection of democracy. Not personalizing it, not making it uh, country specific, but the principle of democracy and the integrity of the uh, ECOWAS region. By January, we are having the next AU summit. So what are the expectations? Um, yes, you know, we, we absolutely have to get it right with the African Union. That's extremely important. There's a, um, as you know, there's a Agenda 2063 uh, of the African Union. It's a roadmap for African transformation. And we just have to move away from rhetoric to really changing Africa on the ground. So there are a number of issues economy is one and the integration of the continent a free trade zone for africa and uh, greater economic int integration is absolutely key um, free movement of people of persons in africa is absolutely key and we have an au passport now um, peace and security in africa is absolutely key we have too many conflicts in africa taking countries back 30 40 years and this is just inimical to, uh, to economic development. Um, you know, and, and one of the ways we want to make a tangible contribution uh, to that peace architecture, uh, peace and security architecture of Africa, is in the establishment of an African standby force, so we don't depend on, 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 on foreigners, and, um, and also going for the post of Commissioner for Peace and Security. And um, we have a candidate, you know, uh, Fatima Kiari Mohammed. Um, and, and we've moved away from just, um, you know, putting forward candidates because, you know, they happen to be working in ADIS or whatever, they're part of the civil system. But to get somebody who has a background in peace and security and who has skills with regards to conflict pre uh, prevention, uh, management of, um, you know, conflict situations and also uh, peace building and uh, post-conflict, uh, uh, um, you know. So, um, so we have a candidate uh, for that. And then a very important thing that we really hope will succeed with the African Union is uh, a new way of funding it. You know, we're taking the ECOWAS model where each country will, uh, will, will tax its imports, 0.2% of its imports, and pay that to the African Union. If countries do that, and we've put in place, we're putting in place a mechanism for that, Af the AU will be self-sufficient, will not have to depend on foreign partners for, uh, for funding. And that's, um, that's extremely important. Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Oyema, thank you so much for making our time to be part of this episode of Question Time. It's a real thank pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you. During the post-colonial era, Nigeria was regarded as a giant of Africa with the leadership responsibility to liberate other African countries and to ensure peace and security in Africa. But today, does Nigeria still command that big brother role? With political rivalry amongst African leaders, with security and political interest falling in discordant tune. What happens to the peer review mechanism initiated by former African leaders? No doubt, the need to change the narratives concerning Africa's political future calls for a new thinking and a deep reflections that would bring a positive turnaround in the affairs of the African nation. And that's it on this episode of Question Time from Channels Television. You may also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Join us next week on another exciting episode of Question Time. Many thanks for watching. I'm Benga Ashiru. Bye for now.